Previously on Come Deal with Me. This system of how to find deals, yes? Yes. Okay. yes. So we started our property journey back in October of last year. Um, since then I have quit my job, so I used to be a maths teacher at a secondary school. So since the beginning of this year I've been working property full time. Justin is a electrician and he's now gone down to four days and it's all because of what we're doing property. And I kind of plateaued if you like because I kind of looked, looked at my, my personal work rather than my property and now I'm kind of starting to get that journey back up again. Is we're going to help them more, you know, we're going to give them more guidance so they get their finance in place so they're not using any of their own money and then it's a race for them to exchange and complete and the person who does that first will be the winner. For most, the thought of having multiple properties that provide a regular passive income is no more than a dream. The possibility of being able to buy, renovate and sell properties at a profit, or to be able to keep them and enjoy a regular rental income is seemingly impossible. But that's exactly what Mark Harvey and Trisha Pegg have achieved in less than four years. They built a property portfolio worth more than £8 million, freeing them to enjoy their lives today not having to look forward to their retirement. After first believing that this was possible and after developing a system that they have found works, Mark and Tricia now teach each other how they can transform their lives too. But now Mark and Tricia have gone one step further. They decided to launch a competition where the winner would be able to learn from them how to invest successfully in property. But the winners are not allowed to use any of their own money to launch their property career. To the winner of this unique competition, the invitation is simple. Work with us, learn from us, and profit from us. Come deal with me. So welcome to the final of Come Deal With Me again. We're in the next location, we're in Derby this time. Where's Derby? Where, what do you mean, where's yeah. Derby? <laughs> I'm very curious. Hey, listen, yeah. I'm, better, I'm better prepared though this time because when we were in Liverpool, it was freezing Freezing. cold. It took us at least two hours to warm up just on the way back. This is one of the places where it started. That brings nostalgia back. <laughs> first deal for us, first deal for Matt. Hopefully, he will be getting it completed very soon. Yeah, but we already it's know a... this area as well for what he's uh, saying that he wants to do with it. Uh, it just works well. It's like no, it's we, the location, yeah, the we demand, know from experience. Yeah, the demand is amazing. They go very quickly around here. Very good rents as well. I mean, I know from when we started, we had very different conflicting views on like rental income and the kind of passive income that we were likely to expect. Not and conflicting views, conflicting information yeah, from other information, people. Yeah, information, yeah. So like people telling you can't do it, people yeah. saying that certain, certain things are not going to work. So you need to have a strategy and a process so you're not, you're not doing your due diligence based on emotion, yeah, based on, trust. oh, I feel, I feel like this. And you know? trust and having the right team around you because without us having one another and our outcomes so strict in our minds, we would never have probably gone forward with that first deal. Let's see how Matt has been following the process and let's see, uh, let's confirm some of his uh, due diligence and see how he's getting on with this deal. Minus, um so initial offer is... I just, I just want to know if you know, if you know the deal, if you know the numbers. Uh, but it doesn't matter if you don't have it. I this formula so I don't have to kind of rely on it on uh, the top of my head. Yeah, but you sense. don't know if that goes wrong. What happens if that's like a formula goes wrong or something? You need to, if you don't know it at the top of your head, then how do you, you there's no way you can check it. So Matt, good to see you here. Yes, Matt. I'm proud of this uh, property already looking at it from the outside. So uh, what, is, what is it currently? So it's currently a HMO, uh, I believe five bedrooms, although it's not licensed, so it would have been officially four bedrooms, but I think it might have been a bit cheeky. Okay, good. And uh, what is it that you're doing to it? So I'm going to change it into a seven bedroom all on suite HMO with two small extensions. Awesome. So how are you finding the process so far? Good. A little bit stressful, like all property deals are, but um, 
it's going well. We're you know we're nearly at the end of the process now, so that's great. Um, all the drawings are done, the finances in, so it's just ticking the last few. Boxes. So are you close to exchanging and completing? Yeah, it should be very soon. Yeah. Okay, very good. Soon. And uh, what kind of have you had any challenges then? Because you've said yeah, it's a bit stressful. Like yeah. what kind of challenges have come up that you're like? Phew. So there's a lot more paperwork involved than I thought. Uh, I've done obviously the process before, but not with investors. I've used my own money, so there's a lot more on that aspect of it that uh, I wasn't fully clued up on. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of put a slower burner on the process than I'd like. But um, other than that, a little bit of to and fro with the architects, make sure we get the best kind of spacing. Um, I wasn't convinced when they gave us the six bed. So they gave us a seven bed, but six en suites, mm -hmm. one shared between two bedrooms. But I really wasn't happy with that because I knew the demand around here was everything needs to be en suites. Um, so so I guess, who, who, who's the demand for? Who, who? For students. So it's going to be a seven bed on suite for students or professionals, but I think this area really is a pro predominantly students. So uh, so you're going to be gearing it up for... August. Pr a product September. that students like. September, yeah, so yeah. the August, September intake. Just, just gives us awesome. enough time with the build and, you know, a bit snagging. September should be uh, should be all done, rent, ready to rent. So I'm going to the estate agents today to handle the drawing so they can put it on the market. Okay, good. Wow, so excellent. based on some of the uh, things that you've been telling us already, I'm excited to go around, have a look, and see how you've managed to maximise the space or what options you've come up with so far. Should we go and have a look? Yeah, absolutely. Plus your next to us, Matthew. Yeah, I'll just project. I'll have like a Chinese. So we're outside now, so what is it that you're doing out here? So there's going to be an extension here, single storey extension. There's going to be one coming out to the same end of the um, building here. So we're squaring off the building, if you like, all the way out, knocking down this retention wall here. Uh, and the new boundary wall will be exactly the same as where the wall is now. And there's a small extension coming out the back of this one, again, single storey, which is creating a bedroom from there. But it will come out roughly to probably just before that uh, support on the uh, the uh, fence line there. Excellent. So you've kept it just where you can do it with permitted, permitted development. development. Yeah. Yeah. Makes it nice and easy, nice and speedy process. Yep. And uh, what, what are you doing with this? Well, we're going to keep it. <laughs> so this is just going to be storage for builders at the moment. Uh, it's Ironically, it is already a storage for a builder next door, I believe. He rents it off the person who owns his house. Uh, but uh, that'll be knocked down and then that'll be a car parking space. Um, Brilliant. I think potentially two, two cars. Uh, uh, yeah, I think you get back. two on there. Get on there. And have you checked um, asbestos reports and stuff for it? Um, for that, I don't believe there is any, but there is a little bit of asbestos in the cellar and in, in the room there, I think. But I think as long as you're not actually... disturbing it, you're fine, but it's just, yeah, just generally these these kind of things. But even, like roof, even, in, like... even in that, like even if there is asbestos, it's not a problem. You just have to get a team to come yeah, and yeah. remove it. And it's, yeah. it doesn't cost very much to give you a certificate to say that you've done it safely and that's about it so it looks good do you know what to, to like just think about going around it what we've seen things stand out for me so the mint and floral is just a stunner that's exactly the kind of reason that I got into property in the first place because of things like that yeah, I think the utilization of space yes and also the thought behind making things match up like all the drainages together, yeah. you're utilising existing uh, things that are already there like doorways and root, like the, how you're utilising space, moving the walls. Because uh, I think what's good about that is you've not been too scared to think, oh, another piece of work is another piece of cost. Yeah. You're focused on adding the value. Yeah. So I can definitely see that that's what you've done. Making it the best for the, for the tenants and especially if they're students, you know, you've put a lot of emphasis on making them have a really nice, big communal space, yeah. which is important for that type of demand. With lots of light. Lots of yeah. light, lots of open spaces. And yeah, I think you've made a really good utilization of the space. I think you've utilized the process really, really well because you've used the people that are experts in those areas and you've gone back and forth to get the outcome that you really wanted. Yep. I'm excited. I'm, I'm on ten to hooks when it's going to get through. <laughs> Who's going to win? Any day now. Who Any is going to win? Seriously, this is this is a race, and we know that literally all he's got to do is get it through now. He says with the delays, with the legals and things like that, yep. paperwork can be crazy sometimes. You know, we're going through a deal like that ourselves at the moment, right? Um, where you're going to have to get extra personal guarantees signed and everything. Solicitors just doing this for your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, you're doing a really good job. 
excellent property and even more you have more than just this deal i think you can do great things and i'm Thank excited you. for you and uh, let's see if you win i'm excited for the process so we're here with justin and ray today in burton, in burton on trent which is only a stone's throw away from where we live so this is nice it's in our territory in our ground great area but what's awesome about this place is that like you you wouldn't suspect maybe it would be as rife to invest in mm. as other places other places are not too far away you know like bigger cities like yeah, in, in the east midlands here, in the midlands there is so much there is so much there's hospitals the train station which has links to everywhere so it's a real hub for that you've got to be strategic though there's loads of industrial plants like there's literally one across the road from us here so you have to think about outside the box the students so it's a total mixture of kind of your renting what i love about oh, no. justin and ray like so much is that before they entered the process of come deal with me they were only doing a rent to rent strategy because they didn't realize how to invest using none of their own money they thought that they had to have money to be able to buy assets and now this is really exciting because not just one deal they have four deals going through that they are going to own themselves as a personal asset as well as giving them passive income. So how many cases do you actually have accepted? I'd say one proper one okay. that we're going to talk about. One out of all of those? We had, we had a big learning. Yeah, we have had a big learning. We uh, really stick to what you taught us on the first one. So this is a really new process for them and they said following the process is what's enabled them to be able to buy a property for themselves instead of focusing on the rent to rent strategy. So yeah, I can't wait to see what they found and hopefully this is going to be onto a winner. I would recommend people to definitely come because in this weekend it's got me out of my comfort zone. It's made me learn a lot more about myself and what I can apply to my life and my other businesses. I've made incredible contacts in the room and I've raised over 150k in 20 minutes of phone So definitely get yourself along. You're going to meet some great people, you're going to learn some amazing things and it'll take you to the next level. I, I would definitely recommend people to come because it makes you think about money in a totally different way and it takes the constraints away that you've lived with your whole life and I mean my whole life you know I've just had these little constraints that just come through normal upbringing and normal life and now I just feel like the blinkers are off and it's just all there to be done and there's just so much money sloshing around you've just got to make it work for you and make it work for your investor and if you do that then you're winning everyone's winning yeah, I think um, all of what we learned from not only today but yesterday as well, it was absolutely amazing. And it was, you know, whole days here, but I think it, it, it was absolutely worth it. Definitely recommend it to come for any kind of this event. There's more being delivered in the course than probably a lot of other courses that I've been to. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was and I feel I've had a really, really enjoyable weekend and I feel like I've made friends here as well. I'd always been interested in HMOs but I also want to do development so I can see a pathway now of how I'm going to go from knowing a little bit about HMOs and having had an HMO to uh, how I'll be able to scale that massively and very quickly. So yeah, I can't wait to see what they found and hopefully this is going to be onto a winner. Hello! I don't know, you look Hello! This is Georgia. Hello! Guys, we're here with Justin and Ray and we're really excited to be able to see around this amazing asset that they are hoping to win by for Come Deal With Me final. How does it feel to be in the final? Amazing. Yeah, it feels really good. We never thought we'd get to the final, did we? 
Yeah, I, I always did. Did you really? <laughs> yes, I did. Our first video, though, we was I said, oh, it's 10 o'clock at night, I'm so tired, I'm going to bed. And Justin was like, ah, oh, I'll do it on my own then. And I didn't even know he'd sent a video in. And then a so few days later, he said, we threw in, it's all because of me. I was like, oh. <laughs> So what, what have you got to show us what we're going to look at today? So this is a free bed property in Burton. Um, it is already done up to a good spec. Um, so that's going to help us on the build costs. Um, and it's going to be a seven bed all on suite HMO with uh, extension at the back, uh, house into other bedrooms. So, wow. yeah. so you're really going to significantly increase the floor print of this house, which will, oh God, yeah. of course that adds value anyway, because you're adding square footage, but then you're going to make it an income generating business asset at the same yeah. time. Yeah. And I think, you know, personally for me, this is my favourite viewing so far because it's warm and I have a cup of tea. <laughs> so have you had any challenges like what's been happening with the actual purchase side of things? Um, we've had a few challenges, haven't we? Originally got it accepted before viewing at 142 uh -huh. and we actually got it accepted after viewing at 138. Wow. <laughs> Negotiation skills. <laughs> First one, not so much a challenge, but because the vendors still live here, um, and we wanted a quick sale, well, so we upped our um, purchase price. Because it's a race, right? Yeah, you we need to get a win as quickly um, as possible. But they're happy with that; they're getting more money, um, and they're happy to leave a one or two earlier. So, so you just explain that then. So, what have you had to do to make that quicker? So it was going to be a couple of months, right? So yeah, yeah. It's going to be a couple of months, and. Uh, the vendor had a early repayment charge on his mortgage, so basically we've had to pay that for to exchange and complete on this month. Um, wow. So it, we, it was a, originally agreed at 138,000, um, and then we got it for 140. But it still works in our numbers, and yeah. we're still going to be able to pay money out. So yeah, we have. So to how have you done like the due diligence for the demand in this area? So you're going to turn a seven bed. Yeah. yeah, professionals. It's yeah, yeah, professionals. yeah, professionals. Yeah. So this has also been a, a bit of an obstacle in the way mm. it for us. Um, when we was doing viewings in Burton on Trent, we was walking around with the with the estate agents, um, and we're saying, if we bring you a HMO to this area, you're going to be able to rent it out. They was like, yeah, it's going to be perfect. We sign no worries. Uh, we ran out a lot of rooms in Burton on Trent, and then midway through, um, for after buying it. Our, our JV partners questioned the demand in the area. So and this property or another one? For this this one. property. Yeah, for this so property. we did a little bit more research, didn't we? So, yes, yeah, so we dug into it a little bit more. We rang a few letting agents who told us it was saturated around here and there's not enough demand, but then they're not HMO specialists. So we rang a HMO specialist called Number One Rooms, which are in Burton on Trent. They're the only specialists in Burton on Trent. You've heard it here first. Number One Rooms. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they said uh, it's, it's, it's perfect. They said we've got 160 rooms in Burton at the Trent, on Trent at the minute, and we've only got eight, eight voids out of 160. And they so. said those eight voids was because they'd just come on the market. Every area that you look out for investment and certainly for HMO it's always talked about saturation I get what they're talking about but when you ring in and you're doing your due diligence it's like yeah I get saturation but with what mm. what's it saturated with yeah because they may have a hundred rooms of, um, that are in that area 50 of them might be void but maybe only five of them are to a standard like that's hotel because now they are hotel finished boutique yeah. stuff yeah. they are such high quality that of course somebody is going to rather rent that room than the one that's just a room with a bed in that Definitely. doesn't really have much quality to it no bathroom you know the communal area is not taken care of and it's filthy you know that's what i always ask the question I think it's not people have said to us are. in nottingham um how are you getting 500 a room and well because we want the higher end professional so they would rather pay 500 than live in a place that's 350 with people that pay 350. yeah we're going to be managing this ourselves, so we're, wow, we're going to be getting okay. the tenants in. Um, we're going to be picking who's coming in, and we're going to make sure that every single room is full because we know we know how to fill rooms. And also, I've been looking, and there's not many ensuite rooms in Burton on Trent, so every room is going to have an ensuite. So it's definitely going to go. So yeah, we're happy with that. And what woman doesn't w wants to share a bathroom? Never. I think the whole <laughs> thought about wandering down the corridor in your towel yeah. potentially. I would never want to do that. Slipping onto yeah. the floor and you're giving someone a flash <laughs> is quite. <laughs> A <laughs> concern. I don't really want to do it. Imagine if you got like, you know, you've been for a vindaloo or something, I don't know, <laughs> and you can't get a start on it. No one would want to share a bathroom with it. <laughs> it's just not something you're going to want to It's very different from all the rest of them because this one is literally lived in, but yeah. the other ones have been like there really. Yeah. Know, it's my favourite though as well. And, uh, in a terrible state, so let's go and have a look. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I have to be honest, this is probably the nicest kitchen I have been in, even on a refurbished property. <laughs> <laughs> it's new. It's, 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 it's literally got the cellophane on. It's got the cellophane on it. 
So what are you going to do? Are you going to keep these? Hopefully, yeah. I've come around with my builder and he said, uh, this is really nice, you want to keep it? So I said, yeah, definitely. So definitely. Said, but we want it in that room, don't we? We're going to see if it all fits in that room. And if it don't, we're going to make it fit in that room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to keep it. So what's this place going to be here then? So we're going to have a wall right here where we stood. And right. from here, we're going to extend that to the lean-to. And then all of this is going to be a big open plan. So the extension is just that way? Extensions that way, yeah, but we're also going to extend out from the back wall that way for the oh, okay. two bedrooms. Yeah, yeah. So you're doing two bedrooms at the back? Yeah. yeah. So two one story? Yeah, one story, yeah. So two double bedrooms en suite, so it's like a 30 metre going out there, really. From that back wall, yeah. near enough for 30 metres. Yeah. 30 metres, so at least two nine square metre rooms that she'll get out of that. Yeah, that's what we're aiming for, with, yeah. With the en suites in. With the en suites. Awesome, built in wardrobes. Built in wardrobes. Awesome. Everything. Excellent. I love a bit of doubling up on the back. <laughs> Yeah, but this is the thing that people don't realise. These small houses, if you do just put a really nice six metre out the back, two double bedrooms. It solves yeah. the problem of trying to find... 50 yeah. yeah. You've made your money back just by doing an extension, which probably costs, what, 15k? Something yeah. like that, just to do that? And you're adding so much square metre. So, so much square metre. Yeah. And there's a house which is five doors down. Um, they've had an extension out the back as well, so that filled me with confidence when putting it in and applying for the planning permission. Yeah, yeah this wall is going to be getting knocked down with some RSJs put in to support the walls above. This is also going to come down and the extension is going to go out that way, so it's going to be a big open plan area. Awesome. Are you still going to be able to access down the side of the house? Yes. So have you thought about making some of the rooms like their own entry? Because then you could charge more. Because if they get called like a studio, then they've got their own entrance. Yeah, exit. I've thought of that because I always thought in ours, no one would want that front room and everyone wants it yeah. because they can walk straight through and everyone else goes through a different entrance and they've got their own key, it's like a little flat. Yeah, exactly. So the ones in the back could yeah, do that. have that just door. like that. Yeah. It's like you'll get the ones that weren't nice because then they don't yeah. have to come and walk through yeah. and like disturb people. No, but I think it's just, to just to literally away. like having that yeah. entrance of their own. Yeah. yeah. But you don't have to walk by them yeah. if you don't want it. You get an extra £75 a month for the ones that have got, and they haven't got a kitchen in. It's just literally a double on suite, wow. but because of their own entrance exit, yeah. they pay an extra £75. So they haven't got to really liaise with anyone if they no, want to? No, because they can just walk through to the kitchen living room this bits. way and yeah. they're off to go. Yeah. So they've still got their access through for the doors, so, so you love the doors, them, but it yeah. is, it's like their own little self yeah. unit. So how many rooms are you going to have down here in total? It's going to be three. Two at the back. Three. Two at the back, one, one at the back. One three. Oh, oh, sweet. Okay, Excellent. awesome. Let's go and have a look at the other Let's go upstairs and see. I love that chair. We need to keep that chair as well. Oh, this is going to be a bedroom. Um, just this room by itself is going to be a bedroom. It's going to be extended that way. It's a bit of a tricky space. Yes, yeah, so making you know your hair. We actually want to push it back a little bit further um, because. Tell me when. Tell me when. Keep going. Tell me when. Tell me when. Stop. Wow. Well, I wanted it over there because I feel like that's this little area here is just wasted Wait. space. So I think we're going to put a, this, move this door down there yeah. to the bottom and have this door for this area a bit further down. And then this is all going to get knocked through because these are. So where's the boiler going to go? The boiler is going to go downstairs in the communal area yeah. or next to the stairs. So it's just about being creative with, it, with this a bit. Why are you there. putting your cylinder? The cylinder, that's a very good question. That's going to go under the stairs because there's a little bit of storage there. Brilliant. So, yeah, perfect. How? Did you just make that so up now or is it always going there? <laughs> no, I've made it up. It's going in there. Look at that. Oh, wow. So, oh, extra space, goodness. so it could even go in there that's or it could go in there. That would fit perfectly yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, but on, on my building quote, I've had, he's put down two. Well, wasn't this going to be like more space for that room? Yeah, this is going to be more space for that room. Yeah, so, so if you're going to take that, then you have a bit more space in the room. I'm just going to show this side. It could go in there. Oh no, that's not big enough. Wow. Well, Why did you question the builder? My builder's quoted for two showers to be run off the boiler and five electric showers. Now, me being an electrician, I kind of know that it's not possible to have five electric showers on one uh, single phase supply. So it's something I need to have a more in-depth chat with them. Um, don't go for electric showers. I know, that's it costs more money. Yeah. And if there's a problem with it, then they're all they're, they're all, all done. So there's like, the best thing to do is get them all to run yeah. off the boiler, like beautiful, whenever they need hot water, they've got it on demand, power 
power showers. I hate electric yeah. showers. I couldn't have so one. So where is the is the room? Is that going to be utilised as a room? Which one? This uh, upstairs. Yeah, that's yeah. a bedroom already. But it's we're going to be utilising some more space. Maybe from there for the ensuite, maybe, yeah. So you still toying with a lot of design? We were toying with the design, yeah, my architect's got the plans at the minute. What our plan was, building control. Where you, where you come up the stairs, have a door here for this bedroom area, and then have a door still on the door on the other side for the ensuite to be in that corner because that's an yeah. awkward little space. Yeah. Or we could even knock into the wall and get a little bit of space from there and yeah, it's really Yeah, make your ensuite so. and then and then your built-in wardrobe so it's all tucked away. Yeah, and got everything to one side and this room. is just gonna be a livable space. And then you can put a TV and stuff on here. Yeah. Well our architect said, um, if we couldn't get the two bedrooms out the back for the for the extension, I was thinking about putting a dormer up here and having two bedrooms in this space. I don't know how it would work because to me, I can't see two two bedrooms up here, but it's just something that's well, suggested. Well, it depends because... It's because um, the stairs are in the way though. Yeah, that's okay. the thing. It seems pretty high already. So usually like a dormer had loads of space. So what I'm saying is, even, like double dormer. even when you take that, the dormer, how much space will it actually give? Because mm. usually the dormer, let's say the roof is at this pitch. Yeah. When you put a dormer on, boom, you just got all this yeah. space. Yeah. But already I, I can utilize most of the space. Mm, so I, know what you mean. I can definitely utilize yeah. a lot of the Me space. Me and Justin can. <laughs> yeah. What I love about you guys is you've literally gone I'm not taking myself out of the game here. You've paid more money to the vendors, which in the deal still works, so you were able to do that using the process. And now you are really back in the running. So I've, I literally, I, I have no idea who's gonna win this at this moment. We like to think ourselves as dog horses. <laughs> <laughs> the underdogs. That's it, the underdog. So just gotta do whatever it takes to, uh, to do what we can and yeah, do whatever it takes to discover your true potential. Yeah, hey! <laughs> The extension is going to go from that wall there up into about this wall here. Um, as you can see, a couple of doors down, they've got exactly the same extension, so we're no under permitted development. We're not going to have any issues at all. If you seriously add in some square footage, it's going to yes. really, it'll make a massive difference on the finance. Good eyes on uh, looking around to see what other comparables of what work yeah, you want to yeah. do as well. I even climbed over the back, back, back fence as well and just uh, had a look at it and stuff. <laughs> Find out who their builders was, <laughs> stuff like that. The main challenge we've had is that we won't get a commercial valuation on a seven bed HMO. And apparently it's never been done. So never, we think never we're going to be never the first done. people to get that in Burton on Trevor. Never been done. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the rumour around it. I think, I think what's interesting with people's perspectives on commercial valuations, it's not a case that it can't be done. It, it may never have been done in their area or maybe they're just saying from their experience they've never had it happen to them it's all about following the process working with true and proper commercial banks because they see it very differently so some people say we weren't able to get a commercial valuation but then i the first question i asked which i know if you've seen me asking you guys is what bank did you go to what lender and I'm, and mo most of the time like nine times out of ten it's because they've gone to a high street bank oh definitely or, if, you do, if you do that but the, like, but the thing is i think people get too fixated on this commercial valuation like call it whatever you want at the end of the day it's just that commercial banks they have a conversation with you it's more of an understanding of what is the situation when it comes to the lending so as long as I mean for me I don't really care what it's called but for when we're doing deals it's like what valuation are we able to get based on what it's worth yeah. yeah you know based on you know it's an income generating asset based on the standard based on uh, the, what the conversation we can have and obviously ultimately what it comes down to is what does what happens and the use the class bank if they yeah. Could, yeah the use the class, use class in this thing. case because remember with going to a normal c4 planning use class for a six bed this is a commercial use class it will be yeah. so when you've got the seventh room that's not any it's not even a residential house anymore it is a commercial use class building so that takes it to a different league again which is again something else that helps the commercial bank say fair enough yeah. no, nobody else could just buy next door and turn it into what they have for cheaper because they have to go through the whole planning aspect and everything that's how they review it and they're looking at like so the value that's been added but then you've got the income what is the income over and then they they give you a yield valuation or however as valuers work it out very differently depending on who they are but that's what it's about so doing your due diligence based on fact like what is it banks are looking for this i need to provide this and then we see where it goes to so uh have you have you raised all the money yeah 
Yeah. Or some good job on that. So how close are you to getting this over the line? The solicitors are doing their thing. We're really pleased with our solicitors. They do work quickly. Um, architects bin, builders bin. We're just waiting for the plans back from the architect. And, and then I can push forward with the finance. Development but finance, my, yeah. the broker that we're using is uh, really, really good. And as long as he's got the full quotes for absolutely everything on the property for development finance, that should come pretty quick. So, yeah, we're just going to do whatever it takes to get it over the line. <laughs> and make Good sure um, if you're do, doing like development finance, which I know we've discussed before, um, that you get fixed price quoting from yeah, your builders yeah. because otherwise it's going to sting you later because the bank's only going to agree to lend you what they're going to agree. Yeah. So anything extra will have to be sourced by yourselves. Yeah. So just, yeah, make sure your builder's aware of that yeah. when they're doing drawdowns and stuff. No problem, yeah. Good it's job, fun. guys. It's calling it fine. We're going to see what happens. Oh! Yeah. It's been awesome. It's been really cold. And I'm <laughs> glad we finished uh, a warm house, warm house on, on, on this one. With a cup of tea. Just love it. That's part of England. Give us a <laughs> cup of tea and we're all happy. Please join us in the next episode.